Smile Sun Vision Talk Show. Will you come back? Welcome to Smile Television Talk Show. I'm your host, Stephanie Anthony Miles, and I'm just elated to be here with a sorority sister, a friend, and an individual who's running for office in the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. She's running for the seat of treasurer. Smile Television Talk Show is aired every Monday at 11.30 a.m. on Charter Cable Channel 191, and again at 8 o'clock p.m. on Charter Cable Channel 984. Remember, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was crucified and buried, and he rose on the third day. Confess it with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and the scriptures teach that thou shalt be saved. Don't go away. We're going to be talking with Charlotte Moore, a candidate for treasurer in the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. Oh, you caught me reading my Monitor newspaper again. I try to read my Monitor newspaper as often as I can because the Monitor newspaper in East St. Louis, Illinois keeps us abreast of activities going on in our families, with our friends, in the state, the country, and even the world. We support the Monitor because they've been in business since 1963. They know the newspaper business. Support the Monitor newspaper right here in East St. Louis, Illinois. Now let me get back to reading my Monitor newspaper. Let Isles of Productions help you with your production needs. Commercials, weddings, music video, or events. Need your book or play converted for the big screen? Isles of Productions can help. For more information, please visit our website www.islesofproductions.com or give us a call for a free consultation. Join Isles the video revolution every Monday at 11.30 a.m. on Charter Cable Channel 191 and on Charter Cable Channel 984 at 8 o'clock p.m. Support Smiles Television Talk Show. You can go to gofundme.com slash smiles tv 777. We need your help. If you're interested in being a guest or you just want to talk to us, call us at 618-741- Three seven seven zero. Welcome back to Smiles. You know what? On April 7th, there's an election. Yes, we have the opportunity to go out and vote again, and that is so important. The Smiles Television Talk Show has offered this platform to all candidates to come on and discuss their platform so you can get an opportunity to see for whom you're voting. Today, I'm honored to be sitting with a young lady who's running for a treasurer for the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. And her name is Charlotte R. Moore. She has a wealth of experience and knowledge. She served as a member on the Board of Review. She has over 35 years of experience in, this, in the city of East St. Louis City Government. As a matter of fact, when I was working with City Hall, she was the treasurer at that time. And I want you to join me in welcoming Charlotte Moore. Thank you, thank Charlotte. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Smile. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Oh, you, you know yeah. what? I didn't know that you were going to run. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I, was, I was elated to hear that. And as I said, I can't take a position here, yes. but I'm, I'm still glad to see that we have Thank individuals you. who are from the community Thank who you. are willing to serve the public. Thank you. you know what, Charlotte, I have a, a lot of information here that I can talk about, but if they want to hear from you, they want me to be quiet for a while. Yes. So tell us and tell me, give us a little bit more about your background. Okay. You know, um, you went to, first of all, did you go to East Side? No, I went to Lincoln. Oh, well, that's okay. Yes, okay. Is <laughs> Dunbar better? Dunbar is better because they don't know this, but Dunbar Elementary School was a little academy. That's right. That's and it right. still is. You know, we have some great instructors in the right. St. Louis area. Right. But, Charlotte, tell us a little bit about your background. We went to Dunbar Elementary School. Right. And then, go ahead. Uh, I, went through, I went through the public system uh, through District 189. Mm -hmm. uh, and not to keep it lengthy, but I have three degrees. Do you? Yes, uh, Central State University, BS degree. Um, in? SIU in, in finance and okay, management. Okay. And then I went to SIU Carbondale uh, for a business degree in education. And then I have an MBA from National Lewis University. Okay. okay. And, and you know, I've known you for a while and I didn't mm -hmm. know all of that. Yes. And okay. I have uh, all the certifications that a treasurer should have, okay? 
Um, I'm certified through, well, I served on the Illinois Municipal Treasures Board. Mm -hmm. I served on that board on the state board. I also served on National League of Cities Fire Committee, which is finance. And so I served on National Black Caucus Board, uh, Women in Municipal Government Board, but I'm proud to have been served on the Association Public Treasures. Okay. I'm a member of that. Mm -hmm. I'm a public funds investor, uh, certified. Uh, I'm also a real estate broker. Um, it's it goes, it goes on. on. You know it what? Goes on. When it I goes said on. when I said you had a wealth of experience, yes. I didn't even know yeah. how much you had. Yes. Wow, that, that's yes. good to know. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell me this. Um, you know, a lot of people wouldn't want the position of treasurer. A lot of people wouldn't even want positions in elected as an elected mm -hmm. official. Period. Why have you chosen to run for treasurer? Well, you know, when I was with the city before, even with the board of review, I enjoy serving the public. Um, it, it makes me feel good. It's, it's a good feeling when you're a public servant and you serve the people and you do what you know to do best. And a city treasurer, when I was city treasurer in East St. Louis, I was proud that we didn't have any audit findings on the treasurer's office, that we made daily bank deposits, that we reconciled bank statements. And uh, I was most proud of my staff. Mm -hmm. I had an excellent staff. Over the years, we had the reset program with students coming from middle school. We had seniors coming, and we had college students coming. Any program that came into the city that students were interested in, they worked in my office. But you know, in order to work in the treasurer's office, you have to do a background check, federal, because you have to be bonded. Mm -hmm. So I had a bond, a city treasurer of two million and a million on each police pension and fire pension. So I had a four million dollar bond. Okay. My employees also had a blanket bond on them. But I'm proud of the staff that came through there because, as you know, when you're a city, the salaries were low. So I would recruit from SIU, from the business department, and I got excellent students, excellent graduates. When you first graduate, can't find a job, come work in the treasurer's office. <laughs> and they got good training. I mean, they may have been there six months or a year, and they moved on. So I'm proud of the workers that came through there. I mean, I have lawyers, CPAs, mm -hmm. I mean, very qualified people. When I got elected, all of my staff came in, either had degrees in finance or accounting or something. So I always had an excellent staff in the treasurer's office. And we worked very hard, and if we didn't get the job done during the week, we worked on Saturday. So I'm proud of the employees that came to my office, and they're proud that they worked in the treasurer's office. You know what, something I neglected to say at the top mm -hmm. of the show, because at the um, once we finish mm -hmm. our interview, we're going to be talking with uh, Mr. Mark Miles. Okay. And I don't want to mess up all of his titles, but he's a CPA, a CMA, a CFM, and he's going to break all of that down. Okay. But wow. we're going to just kind of generally talk about okay. finances and the importance okay. for our residents to understand yes. Yes. Um, how important it is to have um, good sound fiscal yes, um, government. Um, John, let me ask you this. What, and you named some of the things that you did as treasurer, but what are some of the duties, like just for the regular John Doe okay. person, kind of break down for okay. us the, the duties of the treasurer. Okay, the city treasurer is the custodian of all city funds. All city all funds. All city funds, custodian of all city funds. And it's very critical that a city treasurer makes daily bank deposits, reconciles bank statements, reviews investment policy. And, you know, I'm proud to say that when I was city treasurer, we, I, we got our first certified investment policy. And that was in 2002. I revised the investment policy in 2006, received plaques from Associated Public Treasures for my investment policy. And I was the first treasurer in Southern Illinois to have a certified investment policy. I'm proud of that. Let me say this, and, and this is my lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. but it's good to know when people have that background mm -hmm. needed for the position, but just as someone who's not in finance, as mm -hmm. you see, I'm in communication, so I don't okay. know the financial yes. world so mm -hmm. much, but it would appear to me that this would not even be an elected position. You know, years ago they thought about not being elected position. Mm -hmm. They talked and I, about I know it. that's not a question we okay. said we would go yeah. over, but it's just, but I'm just curious. When I, I was appointed city treasurer back before it became elected. Mm -hmm. And the qualifications were that you had to have to have a degree in accounting or a degree in finance. So I was city treasurer before it became elected official, and those were the qualifications. So. Okay. And uh, then it changed to elected. And I often think that it should be an appointed position simply because you want someone that's qualified. If not qualified, if they're not bonded, 
You can terminate them. Mm -hmm. When it becomes an elected position, um, it's hard to terminate people who are not qualified for the job. It's difficult. Not that it shouldn't be done, mm -hmm. but it's difficult. You mentioned a little bit earlier that the city treasurer um, deposits funds. and um, How are the funds deposited? Okay. Uh, the 2012 audit that was just finished, presented to council, they accepted it, I believe it's November 4th, 2014. Was it 2012 or 2014? They, when artists come in and they do a random check on your deposits, in 59 of the 60 random checks, deposits were made as late as 13 days to 59 days late. I mean, and this is information you have a record of. You're right. you're not just saying these oh, things. Oh no 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 no! Okay. I have it. I have all the findings mm -hmm. on it, and it is horrific mm -hmm. in terms of how bad the audit was for the city treasurer's office. Uh, it's appalling that you know that these things are happening, but they also talked about um, under collateralized. For example, our investment policy says that any deposit should be collateralized at least 110 percent minimum. That's the investment policy. They found under collateralized uh, investments are in deposits were under collateralized, which means they are uninsured. So if a bank goes belly up, you lose your money if it's not collateralized. Mm. That's how serious it is. And then I found out that they no longer reconcile the bank statements in the treasurer's office. The finance department has to reconcile the bank statements. When you make daily deposits, when I was there, we made daily deposits. You go online and make sure there's interface upstairs in the finance department, but you also make sure that it shows up in the bank. And we also, in the city of East St. Louis, we have direct deposits. So in reviewing bank accounts every day, you may see a deposit come in, whether it's replacement tax or whether it's real estate taxes come directly in the bank. They have to be received in immediately. And that's not being done. And I understand the checks are just sitting in the safe. And when you have like a million dollar check sitting in a safe and it's sitting there and you could be making interest on it, if that's deposited in the bank the same day or no later than the next day, then the city could be earning interest. The first year I implemented my investment policy, we made $678,000 in interest, in interest, okay? And now in the budget this year, the proposed budget for 2015, they have 5000 mm -hmm. Why? Are you only making five thousand? They also have service fees in the budget this year. And if you're doing business with a bank and you you bid them out every two or three years, you have no service fees. So why are the service fees in there? Why is the interest? Because in city investments should automatically be receiving daily interest. If they're not, it's something wrong. Okay. But they can't receive daily interest if the money's not being deposited daily. I'm looking at your um, platform, okay. and you have roughly five points okay. here that um, you're stressing. Um, management upgrading, opportunity for investments, um, order and verification of accounts, right. um, recapturing the credibility for the city, and exceptional leadership. If you will, give us a couple of one-liners, okay. and we'll go back with management upgrading. Okay. Uh, for example, when you look at the audits, I left there in 2008, from 2009 to 2012, it is so many findings in there, and that's because we're not being accountable, you know. Um, in order for the city, I mean, the city, for, for example, and I'm just giving you this, mm -hmm. the Casino Queen revenue may have been 8.5, and now they're projecting like 7.4 this year. With that kind of loss of revenue, it is very important that we make the proper investments and earn as much interest as we can. That's the role of a city treasurer, is that to ensure that the city's money is invested, but invested wisely, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you know, there's some no-nos that you can't invest in on the city level, but you can invest in state funds. Um, you know, it's a number of things you can do in terms of investments, but that's one okay. of the things. Okay, and opportunity for investment. So yes, I guess that kind of goes, goes along with it. that. Okay. And um, on here, you also have order and verification of accounts. Okay. Um, for you to go through a treasury report and accounts were left out of there, we have a checklist. If it's 45 accounts, then you go through and check them off as they come in, or you go online and print out the bank statements, and you account for every account. 
why are they not, when they said bank statements had not been reconciled for six months or they're so far back, if you're doing the checklist monthly and reviewing it monthly and even daily, you verify those accounts are there. Uh, when they paid off the debt uh, for the uh, for the oversight, mm -hmm. okay, it was money left in there. You, you had to draw it down. Replacement tax, you have to draw it down. And that's, when you verify your accounts each and every day and each and every month, and that's part of your monthly treasury report as well as your annual treasury report. With the city treasurer, you're responsible for filing your monthly and annual report in the city clerk's office, in the city clerk's office. And the city clerk, in terms, takes the annual treasury report, publishes, and files it with the county. When, when I was at the city, not only did the city clerk get a copy of the report, every member of council, the oversight, it was public information. I wanted to share it with everyone. So, um, you know, so the report was shared. Also, um, on your plan here, yes. um, you have, um, you want to recapture the credibility for the city and give exceptional leadership. Okay. How do you propose to fulfill okay. those? Well, the reca recapture credibility is for, number one, get mm -hmm. these artists in shape. Okay. Get them in shape. Uh, whatever it takes. And I was told when I met with one auditor that it's going to take me at least a year to put it back together. And with me, I know that we would work Saturdays to keep everything updated. Uh, hopefully the council, because in, in this year in the budget, I noticed that they didn't even have money in the budget for bonds. Did I say that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, as city treasurer, you're supposed to be bonded within 10 days of taking office. So they're going to put money back in the budget for bonding. I guess they haven't utilized that money in six years because the treasury hasn't been bonded for six years. So they're going to put money back in the budget for not only for you to be bonded, but for the staff to be bonded. I see. Okay. okay. And, and you want to provide a exceptional leadership. Yes. Yes. And part of being exceptional leadership is that you're there. You're in the office doing your job, and staff will follow. You know, if you're not in your office doing your job, then staff can do whatever they please. But exceptional leadership to me is that it starts with you, mm -hmm. okay? And so I'm going to provide the leadership. I'm going to tell our audience a secret. Okay. She told me that she was not um, used to talking because she just wanted to do her job and she right. was shy and what have you. Right. And I, I'm, I'm just elated that you're, you're expressing yeah. so well. I, you don't seem shy to me, Mr. Sean. Well, I, 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 I love the city. I love what I do. And when it came time to run this time, I hadn't really thought about running for treasure. And so many people came by the house and they dropped out audits. And I said, Ken, who did this? Who did this? They got my petitions together. So I was encouraged. And... And uh, humbled by the fact that so many people wanted me to run for city treasurer. I do so, want to acknowledge as yeah. well that um, your husband is here with us, yes. Mr. Ken Toomer, and we yes. want to um, thank him for being with us. Um, we, we're wrapping up this first half a yes. little bit. Um, is there anything, because I have one last question when I'm going to ask you to turn to the camera and say okay. some things, but right now, is there anything that uh, you feel that you didn't, you didn't capture? Uh, I guess one other thing mm -hmm. is that I talked about working with students, whether it's middle school, uh, senior high and college students, but I'm most proud is that my goal was to do a Charlotte Moore scholarship mm -hmm. and what I do each and every year is I give out book scholarships to students and I don't encourage them to major in certain things, but at least half the students have majored in business. Uh, half the females are pledged Delta, mm -hmm. have a pledge, AKA. <laughs> but I don't encourage them to do it. I've got one girl that's a chiropractor, and uh, so I mean, I, that's what I'm most proud of. Okay. And that is what I want to do always. I started off giving female scholarships, mm -hmm. and someone reminded me that there are men in need of scholarships, so I've given some men some scholarships. That's, that's okay. what, I mean, I'm proud. You and I both come from educational families mm -hmm. and we encourage education. And in order to encourage you, you have to help young people. And I think that's the thing I'm most proud of. Well, well you know what, I, I stated once that um, you're my sorority yes. member of Delta Sigma Theta yes. Sorority Incorporated, but I'm still not convinced of for whom I'm voting. Okay. And I want you to convince me, okay. convince our voters, okay. why should we vote for you? Okay. Uh, number one, Okay. And, and when you finish, give them um, information of how they can get in contact okay. with you, websites, okay. phone numbers, anything okay. like that. Okay. Um, 
I'm the most experienced city treasurer that you have, the most qualified, uh, have the de de degrees and credentials to serve. And I've, um, I've done a good job in the past and everybody will acknowledge the fact that I've done a good job. And I think just based on my past experience with the city and the treasurer's office, that I deserve your vote. And I certainly would appreciate you voting for me on April 7th for city treasurer. Thank you. And Ms. Shaw, to tell them how can they make contact with you, okay. phone numbers, yeah. um, website. Let me give you a couple of phone numbers, okay? okay? Uh, my cell number is 618-406-2260, and my home number is 618-394-0352. My husband says our phone never stops ringing. Uh, I have a gentleman setting up my website as we speak. Mm -hmm. I am on Facebook, okay. but of course, uh, I look forward to any calls, any questions. If you'd like to volunteer in the campaign, I certainly would appreciate any volunteers. So again, my cell phone number is 618-406-2260. And you. one question I try to ask all of my guests, okay. because we have you on camera, will you come back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. If you get a chance, if you get an opportunity, please come back. Thank you. Because I'm grateful that you're here with us Thank today. You. Thank you. I don't want you to go away. I want you to remember um, Charlotte R. Moore is running for treasurer for the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. We need you to, to vote this year. I'm not telling you to vote for Charlotte, but be sure you vote. Check out her candidacy. Look at her background. Pray about it. And then you decide what to do. In the second half of our broadcast, we're going to be talking with a special gentleman. We're going to talk about finances in general. Mark Oliver Miles, the first. And he's going to give us some insights into what we need to know um, financially, maybe even for our own families in our homes. Right, Don't go away. Talk Stay show every smiles. Monday at 11.30 a.m. on Charter Cable Channel 191 and on Charter Cable Channel 984 at 8 o'clock p.m. Support Smiles Television Talk Show. You can go to gofundme.com slash smiles tv 777. We need your help. If you're interested in being a guest or you just want to talk to us, call us at 618-741-3770. Welcome back to Smiles. We were just talking with Charlotte R. Moore, who's a candidate for city treasurer in the city of East St. Louis. Right now, we're moving on, and I brought you a special guest. Yes, Mr. Mark Oliver Miles I. And I tell you that he's the first because he's my husband and the father of our three children. And, I, and it, my husband actually has a wealth of experience and knowledge. He's a CPA, a CFM, a what else, Mr. Miles? C CMA. CMA, the whole gamut. He's going to break all of that down for you, and thank you for coming to Smiles. Tell me to talk show. We do thank God for you. You know what? Um, we just had such an interesting conversation with a um, young lady who's running for city treasurer, and she told me and enlightened me about the treasurer being responsible for the finances, well, the, all the finances in the city, the keeper of the finances, more or less, in the city. With your background, first of all, tell everybody what is a CPA, a CFM, a CMA. Well, <laughs> um, the certified public accountant is a certified public, CPA is a certified public accountant, which is a, an accountant, uh, a person, a professional that actually provides for assurance for financial statements for third parties. Okay. So uh, what makes uh, our financial system strong is that we assure the fair presentation based on certain standards to third parties who use that information. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, purpose and that's the function of a CPA. A CMA, sort of the, the all the same training, however, it's an internal accountant. So a CMA is a good credential for a controller or a CFO and that kind of process. Okay. A CFM is an, an extension of that, which includes uh, studies in economics and investment and so on and so forth. So that's the distinction and that's what those different credentials are. What would you so, say would be the most important thing for the um, regular citizen to um, know regarding the financial aspect of life period? Well, I, you know, obviously it's the, um, the thing that drives us and takes care of us. I mean, we, we have to work to, to eat and to live. Um, so, it, and it's all tied together. So obviously, increasing your skill set, 
you know, learning, education, improving yourself as a person, and being that, turning that into an income, a, a resource inflow. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really what it's all about. And we're, everybody's not going to do something fantastic, but you have to bring a skill set to be able to get compensated. That's what the marketplace is about. And so we have to understand that we have to, we're bringing skills to the marketplace. And that's what dictates how we live financially. Do you think it's um, mostly in um, the African-American community or among minorities that we just kind of steer away from that financial aspect of um, life? Actually, no, because, you know, obviously there's, in every community, there's CPAs and financial experts mm -hmm. that talk to lay people. So everybody, nobody wants to deal with, we all ran away from mathematics. I mean, we all didn't like that. That was not a, like, except, unless you just like for, it. Except for your children. Yeah, well, <laughs> our, 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 you know, our kids. I know our kids, they, they love it. And I'm like, no, I was a communications I don't, major. And I don't think, it's not a special case in our community that, um, we don't, you know, the lay, no, most lay people don't know. But what happens is as you move up, and I'm going to say it again, as you move up in, in income brackets, mm -hmm. you're required to know about what you're doing with your money. Because now you respect money creates problems. You have to understand it. How can, how can we it. make it more attractive, though, to people in general? Well, what has to happen to encourage people? You know, first of all, and the other thing is this. You know, what I said earlier, of course, that's important. But we also think have to think about entrepreneurship and businesses and recreating the black, uh, a black downtown, a black business district, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, if you have, you have to be aggressive and assertive about going out there and making things happen for yourself financially. And that includes, you know, getting education or opening a business or trying out a new idea or trying out a new product and getting it out there to the people. I mean, that's, so that's, that's the kind of thing that I think we need to be thinking about as a community. Uh, we need to start thinking about being viable ourselves within the city. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you, you're going shopping, you're leaving the city. You're leaving the city limits. So that's sales taxes going out of the city. That's, that's jobs going out of the city, you know. And, and you know, we all, everybody preaches about shopping with our own. Well, we also have to provide things or products and services to our own. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. And um, I want to thank you, Mr. Mark Miles, our financial expert. My husband, the father of my children, for coming to Smile Selfish and Talk Show. And um, I asked all of my guests, and we got you on phone. Will you come back? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again for coming, Mark. And um, we'll talk a little bit later. Um, you know, thank you again for coming, Mark. And we'll talk a little bit later. I want to thank you for watching Smile Selfish and Talk Show. Also, remember um, and help us in thanking our, our, our previous guest, Charlotte Moore. Charlotte R. Moore, who's running for treasurer in the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. I want you to join me in thanking her for being with us. Thank Mr. Mark Oliver Miles II, who's a CPA, CMA, and a CFM. And all of you people in the financial world know what that means. You know, Smile Television Talk Show needs your help. We're a local production, and we try to highlight the good and sometimes controversial issues, but we like to give a, you know, a positive twist if we can. And everything we do, because I'm a Christian, has a biblical worldview, but we need your help. Um, we have production calls, and you can go fund me at gofundme.com slash smiles tv777. Or call me. I'll keep my cell phone with me at 618-741-3770. If you have a business and you're interested in, in advertising, if you would like to promote your business, just talk about the nuts and bolts regarding your business, we can talk with you. We would love to chat with you. You can do commercials, or you can just come on the show and we can kind of explore some of the things that you do. Community-based organizations, agencies, ministries, and you name it, we will talk with you. Watch Smile Television Talk Show every Monday at 11.30 a.m. on Charter Cable Channel 191. And again at 8 o'clock p.m. on Charter Cable Channel 984. Remember, keep smiling. You look better when you smile and only what you do for Christ. Yeah.